Tasha Hao, Worship for Race. And today, I would like to tell you a story about how I enjoy creating things. Human beings are made to create things, and obviously I am a human being, and I enjoy creating things. It all started when I was four years old. My dad bought the family an Apple Macintosh, so I got acquainted in creating things digitally in the early stage. And when I was 18, I got enrolled in Multimedia University, or MMU, where I started to learn about graphics design. And then it moved into motion graphics. That's where I really got interested in creating motion graphics. I graduated. I worked in a post-production house for three months. And then I changed, sort of changed my career path to teaching. And I moved back to Montevideo University to teach for another three months. I was kind of in the lookout for the things that I really love to do. And then I found the joy in creating my own pro uh, motion graphics projects. So that's where Mosho comes in. I found my two other partners, and we decided to create our own projects under this company. An elder cousin told me, if you want to make anything, make it big. So rather than doing it on a freelance basis, me and my two other partners opened up a Syrian Bahad. And we had one single mission, is to change and reinvent local music videos. Because back then, in 2006, all the music videos are like, I don't know. So, this is how I structure my journey. So I have a team, which is the Mosho team, and I, I know the skills that we can do, which is motion graphics, and then the joy, which is to reinvent local music videos. So after three years down the road, it got steady requests to do motion graphics, music videos, TV commercials, but then it, it became a bit more repetitive. So we wanted to find another adventure. That's where I was introduced to projection mapping. So I was curious. I saw this one YouTube video on what projection mapping looks like. So I was really curious. I wanted to know, how do we make one of these here in Malaysia? So where do you go? Obviously, YouTube. So you, look, you type in how to make my own projection mapping. And I saw a few tutorials. So I just go in and try to recreate some of this step by step. So basically, that's how I learned a lot of things, through YouTube. But some people might ask in this hall, what is projection mapping? All right, so projection mapping consists of two things, which are visuals and also the canvas. So the visuals are the things that you project, and the canvas is what you're projecting on. And the word mapping means that you map specific parts of the animation to specific parts of the canvas. For instance, you can project on paintings, or graffiti art, or sculptures. And my favorite will be buildings, because it's big. And I got my first gig to do a projection mapping on a building in Georgetown. I got the opportunity to actually project on a building called Suffolk House, which is Francis Light's house in Georgetown, Penang. This is in conjunction with Digital Arts and Culture Festival in 2011. And this was a really interesting project for me, because you basically can tell a story about the history of Penang and Kedah with the use of projection mapping. So that caught me to actually explore more on projection mapping and how we can do more things with projection mapping. And what it all boils down to is this term called experiential design. So what experiential design is that you design experiences. It doesn't have to be projection mapping. It could also be about your product or how you experience a space in museums or a retail space 
or even an app in your hand. And for me, creating experiences is about creating experiences that is out of your norm, out of your daily, everyday life. And I love to use things, senses like eye, uh, sight, hearing, even sense of smell, if I can use it. So, in terms of creating more things out of the brief, of a client's brief, that's where Filament comes in. So Filament acts in a, as a platform that I could collaborate with multidisciplinary artists and injecting some technology to it to create new experiences. So as you can see here, I collaborate with artists with different disciplines. I add in some technology knowledge that we already have to create new experiences. And there's three components in Filament, which are artists, where we use artists as a collaborator and finding a platform for them to actually do their work. We have academia, where we exchange ideas and see how new technology can help create new experiences. And also public, of course, where all these things that we, we create be presented to the public. So we have workshops, talks, and we invited some of our collaborators to actually talk about their thought process. So this was a uh, one-week show that we had. We had a few artists, and it was displayed in a very historical part of Kuala Lumpur, which is in Medan Pasar. Another one is that we did projection mapping in Kuching. So this is a big opportunity for us, because this was a new opportunity for us to actually project on trees. So this was in conjunction with Rainforest in the City. So we did this new experiment where we projected on trees. So we, this is really fun for us because we have never done this before. And we wanted to find out how it turns out. So definitely, it was a, a magical moment for us. And we got the opportunity to go back to Georgetown. And during Georgetown Festival, we had this opportunity to work, uh, to project on two iconic buildings in Georgetown, which is the City Hall and the Town Hall. I really love Georgetown because there's a lot of white buildings there, which is really good for projection mapping. And this building has its own stories. So having this opportunity was really good for us. We did an open call as well, where we invited animators, visual artists, to submit their animation to us, and we will help them to project back on the building. And to our surprise, we had 80 submissions from all over the world. And we, we discussed with the mayor, and we chose the best 10 to be projected on the building. Here's a short video of Georgetown Festival. Thank you very much. So in this sense, this is part of the thing. Filament team is the team, skills, projection mapping, and the joy is having community involvement in the, in the works that we do. Experiential design also have another branch, which is VR and AR, or its full name is virtual reality and augmented reality. 
It has been a lot of discussion around and a lot of hype around VR and AR, but a lot of people are still clueless where this new technology could be applied to its full impact. But we want to try it, so we try it with our existing clients. We created small games, little, little games, augmented reality, just to present as a marketing and sales tools, generally. But then, it, does, it, it is yet to solve a real issue. So, we wanted to find out, with the skills that we have, with the team that I have, what sort of real issues can we solve using AR and VR. This is where MRVR came about. Or its long name is Medical Rehabilitation Virtual Reality. So it's a series of VR modules that we create to be used for rehab patients in hospitals and rehab uh, centers. I have a short case study video for you. Muda memang tak terima. Aku pagi tu, elok je. Ya. Bila kena macam sakit macam tu, sebel-sebel-sebel salah lah. Sana tak kena, sini tak kena. Ha, niat di hati saya. Saya rindu nak solat. Hari raya tahun ni tak bermana kalau tak boleh solat. experience uh, pesakit ramai uh, tidak dapat memenuhi uh, our program akibat daripada mereka tak dapat datang pada kekerapan yang diperlukan nak, nak pergi ke sio tu ambil masalah jaraknya sangat jauh lah orang pergi berdua lah dengan ayah malaslah nak pergi kata letih kata nak tunggu lama lagi pergilah dua orang mak nak ikut Fizio dengan Oti dia tak boleh bawa balik rumah dia. Kan? Tetapi kalau lah ada benda ni kat rumah kan bagus. Hari-hari saya boleh guna. Encik Mazin had express lah. We want to bring therapy out from the hospital so that um, accessibility tu ada. I was exposed dengan virtual reality. And, uh, so this is where I got in touch uh, with Moshio Fixo, with uh, my younger brother. Tak expect jauh macam ni, tapi kita dah nampak macam memang betul masuk ke dalam ni. Harap-harap tak sesat lah. Eh. VR is one of the ways yang kita can bring the treatment to their houses in a way of bringing the technology and accessibility to a person that is in need. I explain Cik Mak Zain, VR ni apa. Ha, tunjuk dia headset tu apa macam mana kan. Nampak pelik sikit eh. Uh, yeah, boleh je. Boleh. I was a bit worried lah sebab this is the first time we're testing it out uh, off-site with a patient, a real patient. Tapi Alhamdulillah tengok Cik Mak Zain macam eager. Bila kita tahu benda tu pun, kita pun rasa okay. Jom kita try benda ni. This is module uh, Back to Kampung, kita namakan. Kenapa kita buat nama Back to Kampung is to gain that familiarity. Lah. So, you want them to be comfortable with the situation. So, we were quite surprised masa tu. Cik Mak Zain dapat transfer all those eggs in a very quick time. Lah. That's a that's a good sign lah that he's progressively improved. Lah. Bila kita tengok orang at his age pakai VR, which Orang umur macam dia ni pun okey main VR rupanya. His willingness to get better is what drives him to do all these things. I tabik lah dia punya acceptance to this. Jalan rapat sikit kaki, balik. Kita nampak keinginan dia untuk mencuba. Apa doktor rasa yang saya perlu buat ni, saya akan buat. Bila kita tanya dia pun kenapa Encik buat dia, Encik buat dia, saya sebut semangat. Semangat kena ada, semangat kena ada, semangat kena ada. Dia tak pernah putus asa, tak pernah nak mengalah. Dia akan cuba apa-apa cara pun asalkan dia boleh. Sekolah tak nak, nak explore dunia ini? Macam Star Wars. So, <laughs> I think it's a good uh, push and pull effort here juga. lah. With us wanting this to happen and dia pun nak wanting to get better. Somewhat a, a rare occasion lah to see at his age with this semangat. lah. I mean, seeing Cik Mak Zain, he inspires me to do even more. Alhamdulillah.
Alhamdulillah Kalau tak ada semangat daripada kawan-kawan Saya tak ada macam ni Memang boleh tu memang patah semangat lah Memang tak boleh Tapi tak boleh Kena kuat Tiap-tiap kali solat doa Tiap-tiap kali solat doa Pulihkan, pulihkan kita Pulihkan sikit kali supaya kita dapat solat Nimpan dalam hati saya Kalau boleh nak macam-macam biasa balik Kita kena yakin Semangat dan tak putus asa Kena buat juga sampai yang baik Dan daya ni paling bermakna bagi saya Jadi apa ajak saya tu Tercapai So we are at the moment doing a lot of patient testing and if everything turns out well, we want to deploy this um, by mid next year um, to hospitals and rehab centers. So the main goal here is that any, any patient who suffers from stroke, cerebral palsy or brain injury, they have to do a lot of physio activities and they have to travel all the way to these centers to go on a treatment. So the idea here is by having a VR module, the treatment can go to them instead. So that is the main goal that we are trying to strive here. But there's still a lot of work to do, so wish us luck. Hopefully everything will be fine. So here I map out the skills that we have, which is VR and AR, and the joy of helping real people. As you can see, the journey that I had is from the early on to reinvent music, local music videos, moved into community involvement, and now I want to help real people. So the evolution is what brings me joy in finding new things to explore within the, the context of what, whoever yeah, you have around you. So be in mind, the technology is just an enabler. At the end of the day, the technology does not solve the problem. It helps you to solve your problem and it accelerates your intentions. So you have to be mindful, good or bad, technology can accelerate your intention. And in terms of joy, joy of creating things is very close to me because if you find a purpose in the things that you do, you will find joy in within yourself and people around you. Thank you very much. Thank you.